Hi, friend. Happy Wednesday. I'm sending you a big cheers. My New York themed Jimmy Fallon mug. Sending a big cheers from me to you. I wanted to say hi to Jeff and Giacomo and Kelly and Andrew and Fadma and Amy and Liz. And oh, we just have such a great group today. If you're new, if you've never come to one of these before, bring up a chair. We're all friends here. Make sure to say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're coming in from. Maybe what's in your cup. I have a little bit of green tea with mint. I know Jen is joining with no LaCroix today, so it's getting wild on this Wednesday, but I'd love to hear where you are, maybe what's in your cup. Hi to Stephen from Peru. It's so good to see you, David, coming in from Charleston. It's so good to have you all here. This session is going to be a little different. So normally we have coffee with interesting people. We copy their homework. But once a month, we do mini workshops. What does that mean? You might think I've done workshops. I've done seminars. I get it. You don't get it because we do things a little differently around here. And I know it's Shane's first time joining for this mini workshop. So We'll teach you the rope, Shane. This is an interactive conversation. So it's not like workshops where I talk and then you ask questions at the end. I mean, you can ask a question at the end, but the point is, is if you have a question like John from Atlanta coming in and he has a question right now, that's what the chat's for. You can ask your question right now. We're in a dialogue. So if I'm saying something and you're like, hmm, I have a question about that, or I need help with that certain subject, ask it. It's a two-way street. So you're going to ask questions as I'm going. I'm going to answer them. We're going to go through this mini workshop together. And I promise we are going to make this quick. We are going to make this fun. This is not going to be a boring, drawn out workshop. We don't like those. I don't like those. You don't like those. We're not going to do them. So rest assured, we're going to make this really fun. <laughs> and again, if you haven't already, Say hi in the chat. Hi to Flava and Leslie and Monica from Vancouver. Already has their coffee ready. You're going to want to take a big sip of your caffeine, my friend, because we're about to dive into the workshop. So as always, I love to kind of let you know what you are getting into. So meet Kim. Boom. We've already done that. You've already checked something off the list. Beautiful. We are going to hop into the types of things that you can start to share with your expertise online, preferably on LinkedIn, but maybe it's any social media channel. We're going to talk about creating a schedule, how to do that, my top tips and tricks for how I do it, copying homework, my favorite subject, and hopefully yours. We're going to learn from the best of the best. Why would we repeat their mistakes? That makes no sense. We're going to cover two no-nos, big X's, big do not go, red tape, do not do these things. If you do, it's just ugh, never good. And then I'm going to let you in on one insider secret that I've been seeing lately on LinkedIn. So that's another thing. We try to keep these workshops dynamic, which means if you are watching this later, and I mean like weeks and weeks and weeks later, this is all relative info right now. So we are in August of 2022. Uh, this is stuff that's happening in the moment because creating content is dynamic. I wish it was stagnant all the time, but it's not. So I'm going to let you in on one insider secret that I seem to be seeing a lot of right now. And then again, questions. I put that at the end, but honestly, you can ask the questions whenever you want. Remember, it's a dynamic conversation. So don't forget to ask questions as we go. If you haven't already, hit the follow button so that I can keep bringing these tips and tricks to you. It's like sort of my passion, so I'm very into it. And then as always, you know, take some notes, set aside to do the work, or don't take notes. Be your own person. Have your own adventure because you don't have to take the notes because honestly, we take the notes for you and then we send them to you. So as you can see on this scrolly bar right here, very fancy. I know you can go to sendmenotes.com and we will send you the notes. So just so that I can kind of get a temperature check on the room from like Lindsay and Yogesh and Anya and everybody, I'm just wondering how often are you posting to LinkedIn? Do you post regularly? Do you not post regularly? Are you like Kim? You're lucky I even figured out how to sign on to LinkedIn. You're lucky I even remembered my password more or less post, but I'm just curious if you can drop in the chat. I'm really kind of wanting to temperature check to see where we are. If a lot of people who are like, yep, Kim, I got it. 
we're going, I promise there's going to be something for everybody. If you are like, I've never posted online, this mini workshop is for you. If you're like, I post online every day, there's going to be something that's workshop for you. We tried to make it cover all bases, but I'm just curious. So Rachel's posting a couple times a week. So is John. Jen is three to five. Holy moly. That is quite a bit. Leslie is once a week. Caitlin is three times a week. I love this catch for my company. Caitlin, we might just change that and do a little bit for you too. Jim is never, that's okay. We're all here. Rarely, I'm seeing daily of late only comments and likes. This is so important and we're going to talk about this. So David, that counts as content creation. Likes and comments absolutely counts. Uh, Corinne is doing a few times a week. I post when I have something to say that's going to resonate with others. Oh, Chef's kiss, Anya. You know, I love that answer. Uh, it looks like Kimberly's anywhere from one to five times a week. So it depends on the week. Really depends on what's happening. Same with Brittany. Ryan is once a week. Just, okay, we got a little bit of everything going on here. So I appreciate you guys sharing that because it's super helpful for me to get a sense of where everybody's at. I love sharing this fact, kind of starting off these mini workshops, because I think, honestly, I think sometimes people don't believe me. So we're just going to like level set everybody while we're here, which is there are 830 million global members on LinkedIn. Global, meaning I'm not just talking about the United States. I'm not just talking about Europe. I'm not just talking about Latin America, everybody globally, except fun fact, there's no LinkedIn in Russia. That's another story. We're not going to get into it, but you cannot go. And I also think North Korea is, you know, they're not really using LinkedIn. You know what I mean? But anyways, 830 million global members. I don't have to tell you, but that's a lot. That's a lot. I don't have to tell you that. You know that that's a lot. You know that that's a big number. But out of that very big number, there are only 3 million people that actually share content. So whether it's Jim sharing one to two times a week, whether it is Liz, you know, liking and commenting on stuff, congrats. You are one of the three, three million people that share content on LinkedIn. And you might think, wow, like 3 million people. That's a lot. 3 million is a drop in the bucket when we are talking about 830 million. What does that tell you? We got a lot of creepers. Okay. That's fine. You can be a creeper. You cannot do the likes. You cannot, you can be a lurker. I'm a lurker sometimes, but I'm just saying, a, you can think about it like a funnel, 830 million, 3 million people posting. So not a lot. Why do I say that? Why do I kind of start off this mini workshop saying that? Because now is the time. I sound like a broken record because I'm always telling people like, please, please, please post on LinkedIn. It's such a golden era. This will not last. Let me repeat that. This will not last. You are going to see more and more and more people creating. What does that mean? That sort of gold rush, if anybody remembers your history, the California gold rush in the United States, where we all went and tried to find the gold out, out West. That's where we are right now on LinkedIn. So I don't care where you are. I don't care what country are you in. There are not a lot of people posting. So if you decide to post, it's like whew, rocket ship. You're like already, as John said, opportunity, like just, whew, it's, absolutely insane. So now is the time if you can manage it to post, which is why LinkedIn and I created an entire new course. It's called launching your creator business. So the good news is fun fact right now, this is my favorite price of free 99. The course is free 99. That means free. If anyone does not get my very funny dad joke, that means it's free. Here's the thing. I've emailed LinkedIn numerous times. They cannot tell me when it becomes unfree, when you have to pay for it. I don't know when that is. Could be tomorrow, could be next week, could be a month. Unclear. But for right this second, right this like Cinderella moment, it is free. So that's why I'm like, ah, watch the course. Ah, let's talk about producing content because it is completely free. So I want you to see it. So you can go on LinkedIn learning. You can look on my LinkedIn. It's called launching your creator business. Totally free. Very exciting. Why you check it out. Don't know how long it'll be free for. 
So first and foremost, when we are talking about producing content and creating content, first step, if you are on LinkedIn, you have to turn on creator mode, period, end of story, done. If you don't know how to turn on creator mode, I've already solved that for you. It's a 15 minute video. I literally walk you through step by step. I, when I say literally, I'm literally saying like, take the arrow, point it at the top X, like literally step by step, I show you how to turn it on. So no excuses. If you're here, you have to turn it on. So Bruce, you got to turn it on. Jen probably already has it on knowing her. Um, but you just, you have to turn on. So if you're here, if you're in the room, please turn on creator mode. If you already have it on, tap yourself on the back. Great. If you don't homework assignment, turn on creator mode. That is number one, non-negotiable. Next, a little harder. We have to figure out what you can share. We have to figure out what you can share because that is going to be the key and really what motivates you to keep doing it. So if anybody remembers like Pavel's dogs, you know, we like that positive reinforcement. If you post about something that you like and care about and are excited about, then you're more likely to do it again because those happy feelings continue. If you post about a subject for me, math, I'm not great at math. I just, I'm not great. I try. It's not my favorite subject. If you told me I had to post about math every day, I'd be like, mm, I don't really want to post about math. It's not giving me the feel goods. I'm not going to want to do it. So we have to find something that lights you up, that makes you excited, that makes you want to post every day. How are we going to do that? This is, oh, by the way, Monica took the course. Yes. Yes. You can be like Monica and you can see the course for free. I don't know for how long, but I'm really excited that so many people are watching the course, stoked about creating content. Oh, yes. Love that. That's why we're here. So this is what we're going to do to help you find what that magic sauce is. So this is the golden triangle. These are the three things that I have found in terms of people that I work with and other content creators online. It's sort of like the magic sauce. Number one, it has to be something you are good at. Again, going back to my example of math, if you're not good at it, you're probably not going to like talking about it. So it's got to be something that you are naturally good at. Is that marketing? Is that sales? Is that AI? Is that data? Is that the future of work? Is that human resources? Is that quiet quitting? I don't know what really you are good at and what people naturally say like, wow, you're really good at sales or marketing or research, but whatever that is, that's going to be ingredient number one in our very wonderful recipe here. Number two has to be something that you like talking about. Has to be something that you like talking about to the point that, and here is the magic ingredient number three that a lot of people miss. You could talk about this for hours, hours. I have friends who are so big into AI and data, we could spend an entire hour talking nothing about the research that they saw that week and what the future is and this conference they want to go to some subject, whatever it is, again, sales, marketing, you know, what you could talk about it at nauseum. You could talk about it for hours with anyone because you are that passionate about it. You like it that much and it has to be something you're good at. So we are going to brainstorm whatever that is for you. That's in the middle. And whatever is in the middle, that's the type of content that you are going to start creating. Very, don't overthink it. Do not overthink it. If it's something as easy as sales, let it be sales. If it's something as easy as digital marketing, let it be digital marketing. You don't have to get so niche. I know everybody's like, riches are in the niches. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be so, it can be broad. Just something that you genuinely enjoy talking about. Okay, genuinely enjoy talking about. So that is going to be number one. Really, and I know there are going to be some people here because I've already seen some of it in the chat. By the way, chat is blowing up per usual. Great comments, great questions going on there. But I know sometimes people can say, well, Kim, I, I get it. I, I'm going to do those things. I'm going to do my little Venn diagram of what I'm good at, what I like talking about and what I could talk about for hours. But what, until I figure out what that is, because that's going to take me a week or it's going to take me a month or it's going to take me six months. What can I do in the meantime? Right? What can I do today? 
when this mini workshop gets done, that if I don't have time to do that Venn diagram, because I know we're all very busy, we all don't have a lot of time. This is what I tell people, if you want to start immediately, like today, like when this mini workshop ends, here's what you can do. You can do what I call lazy engagement. And David sort of hit on it earlier. I call it lazy engagement because I think it's funny and it will stick in your brain. So lazy engagement, what does that mean? That means you can like comments. That's engaging. You can comment on somebody's post or comment on somebody's comment. You can reply to a comment that you read and said, either that was interesting, either, oh, here's another article you should read, or I disagree and here's why. So you can comment. That works too. You can ask questions. Huge. Go in somebody's comment section and ask a question. Maybe you want more information. Maybe you want a follow-up article. Maybe you want to do something with them collaboratively, but you can ask questions. And you can also tag a friend. So I can see things online and say, hey, Jim, thought you might like this article. You know, it's about cars. I know how much you like cars. I think that this could be pretty interesting about, and maybe the article's about Tesla and the future of automobiles. I don't know, I'm just making that up, but you get my point. You can tag friends that you think might like it. So I love this question, what about the likes? Any sort of engagement is better than no engagement. So if you say to me, Kim, I have 10 minutes and I don't want to do a post or I don't know what I'm going to post about, instead of just scrolling through LinkedIn, start to like some posts. Just like, not any post, obviously only posts that you're interested in, but start to like, that counts. I'd rather see you make some movement than no movement. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather you get out on the field and do something than nothing. So that's what I mean when I say like about the likes, that's what I'm referring to. So again, hopefully that helps clear that up. But if not, ask again and we'll go over it again. So that's what I mean by that. Now, if you already know what content you want to produce, you've done your Venn diagram, it's important that you create a schedule. Now, what did I underline here? Realistic schedule. Realistic schedule. Why did I underline that in red? I underlined that in red because sometimes, a lot of times, we all have big ideas. We got big ideas. We got a lot of ambition. We're like, Kim, I'm going to crush it. I'm going to post four times a week. And then you do that maybe for a week or two. And then you know what? It's not realistic. You can't actually do it four times a week because, you know, the kids are crying, your boss is being crazy, you can't you can't make the time. And that's fine. Set a realistic, doable schedule. That might be you only post once a month. Exactly, Jen, you can always add more. Always add more. That might be once a month. That might be once a week. I can't tell you what it is for you because I'm not sitting next to you and I don't know what your calendar looks like. If you open up your calendar and it looks like a Skittles bag exploded with meetings and dick that's not good for a whole lot of other reasons, but especially for creating content, you're just not going to be able to fit it all in. So pick something that's realistic and know that can change. You know, there's going to be seasons in life where you're really busy. You don't have time to do anything. And there's going to be seasons in life. Where you're like, okay, I, I could create three pieces of content this week. Like I, I can do it. That's not, I'm not going to drown that. That's okay. We can do that. So I think that that's going to be really important when you're thinking about how you can schedule this. So be honest with yourself. If Is it three times a week? Is it once a week? Is it once a month? Set something that is going to be realistic for you. And then figure out how you want to plan this. So if you do not organize your content creation, it will not get done. And I don't know how you organize your life. I don't know if it's Dropbox. I don't know if it's Notion. I don't know if it's Google Drive, Asana, ClickUp, Monday. I mean, there's so many programs and things that you can use. So I don't know what that is for you. I don't know what you're using all the time, but just sort of organize yourself. And what do I mean by that? There can be times where I think like, oh, what an interesting podcast. I'd love to share that. Or, oh, what an interesting article. Or, oh, I took a picture of something that I thought like, what a funny marketing thing. 
if I take that picture and I think, oh, that'd be so great to post on LinkedIn next week, you know, uh, this is really cool. Where am I going to put that? Again, so is it Dropbox? Is it, you need somewhere to store all these cool things that you're finding that you want to post about that you think could be interesting. So again, I don't know what that is for you. That's just, these are a few that I put up that seem to be very popular, but I don't know what that is for you. So John's saying that I write posts in my notebook, you know, as things come to me, I write them down in my notebook because I'm, I'm flowing and I just jot it down. And that way, when it comes time to post, John just pulls out his notebook and boom, they're in the notebook. So again, and Jen's saying, I also do that with a notebook. So again, it's, is it a computer program? James uses paper. I know paper is, a, I believe, a derivative of Dropbox. We've used that a couple of times. That's really great. But yeah, I would love for you to actually share in the chat what you use. Again, we just pulled these because Shelby and I hear about people using these a lot. Notion, Dropbox, et cetera. But I don't, again, there's, there's millions of them. I've also heard of people using Evernote. That is a good one too. So not sure what that is for you, but just know you need something. You need somewhere to drop that stuff because if not, it'll sort of get lost in the shuffle and you won't know where it went. So the next thing is really important. And, and Rachel sort of already guessed what this is going to be, which is you have got to block off time in your calendar to do this. If you do not block off time, won't happen. So for I, this is a screenshot. You can see in this case, it's write content on Tuesdays from 8 to 9.30, weekly on Tuesdays. Again, this is weekly. For you, it could be monthly, could be every other week, could be anything. It's just something that you use to denote to yourself, okay, I need to make time to do this. And I have found when it's a meeting in your calendar, like the other meetings in your life, you're more likely to stick to it and you're more likely to do it. So actually set up time on your calendar as if it was a real meeting with another person, with another human. Um, I know Andrew had a question. Does anyone know what needs to happen to enable the follow button for yourself? Yes. You have to turn on creator mode. The only way to get the follow button is turning on creator mode. No other way. No other way. Do not pass go. Again, turn on creatormode.com. Once you turn it on, that will happen. So if you turn on creator mode, you will get that button. Do not turn on creator mode. Will not happen. So now I want to talk about my favorite, which is copying someone else's homework. We all learn differently. We all learn differently. Some people learn by listening. You know, imagine like a teacher is saying two plus two is four or two squared to the pi divided by, you can learn by listening. Some people learn, you know, tactile, tactile learning, touching. So I have two apples, then I'm adding another two apples. Now I have four apples. So very, very tactile. And some people learn visually. That would be me. I kind of got to see it. I got to see somebody right on the board, two plus two equals four for me to get it. So I think that this is helpful, actually, no matter what type of learning that you do best at, which is seeing somebody else do it. Because when you see somebody else do it, you're kind of like, oh, I get it. Again, think about when you're learning to do anything, whether you're learning to do a sport, maybe you're shooting basketballs or playing tennis, you know, you kind of watch the instructor and then you're like, okay, let me do, let me do what LeBron's doing. I'm not going to really do what LeBron's doing, but you know what I mean? You can kind of get, get the gist. Like I can follow along and do the same movements that they're doing. Same thing when it comes to content creation, we can look at what other people are doing and sort of say, okay, like there's things that I can pick up from this. I can see, you know, what's happening. So really quick. Also, we got a question. What is the best time to post? Great. I'm so happy you brought that up. There's no hard and fast rule of this. So I will just share with you what I found that works for me. And as I talk to other large creators on various platforms, what works for them morning around eight or 9 AM in whatever time either you are in or your audience is in. What do I mean by that? I mean that for most of my life, I have lived and operated on the East coast EST. 
So posting for between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. EST for me, great, lovely. However, I have a friend, a fellow creator, produces a lot of content. I don't know why. I don't know what rhyme or reason. Her content is huge, 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 huge in India. Crazy big in India. Popular in the U.S., but for some reason, crazy huge in India. She adopted when she posts to India's time zone, to Mumbai, not to where she lives. So I always say either where you live, because that's usually where most of your connections are on a platform, or if you have advanced data analytics that shows you like, hey, a lot of my people are not in North America or they're in a different time zone than me, adjust the time you post to what fits them. So thank you for asking that. Keep the questions coming as you think of them, put them in the chat. I will answer them as we go, but I would say morning. Oh, this goes without saying, and I hope you already know this. Saturday, Sunday, dead, dead. Don't, you know, when you have a really good outfit and you go out and no one sees you in the outfit and you sort of wasted an outfit. That's how I feel about posting on Saturdays and Sundays. You have a really good post. You think like, mm, I worked really hard on that post and then no one sees it. And then you're like, Wasted my good post on a day when no one sees it. So just like a good outfit, don't waste it on a day when no one's going to see it. Okay, back to copying homework. If you like writing long form content, like that's your thing, like you're a writer, like you're like, mm, like the thought of writing five paragraphs to me sounds horrible. But if to you, it sounds like five paragraphs, no problem. I could write five pages, easy cheesy. Okay, here's some great homework that you are going to want to copy. So newsletters are on LinkedIn are a great form of long form content. Gemma Lee Roberts has one of the most popular newsletters on LinkedIn. She is, I think, up to almost 400,000 people are subscribed to her newsletter a lot. Mindset Matters. You can check that out if you like doing long form content. Same with Tatiana. Same with Ryan, who is here today, I think. Let's see if he's still on with us. I don't know. But if you like writing long form content, go check out what these people are doing. Like go copy their homework, go see like, oh, I like that he adds pictures or I like that she has bullet points or I like that she has this animated video in the middle of it. Whatever it is, see what they're doing and see what you might like for yourself as you think about writing long-term content. So again, when you think about long-term content, Go check out what these guys are doing so that you can see. And again, I try to mix it up like Gemma, I know, and include some videos in her stuff. Ryan does a little bit of work, a little bit of pop culture, a little bit of fun facts. So again, there could be something interesting for you to take away from any of these people because I think that that will be, that will be a good one. Um, Leslie's asking a follow-up question of if there are specific days that are better to post Monday through Friday. I would say again, Monday through Thursday. Don't shoot the messenger. This is just what I've seen from my own content creation and then other people's content creation. That's not to say that Friday isn't also a good time to post. It's just sometimes, especially in the summer, you have people that have summer Fridays. You have people that take Fridays off around holidays. A lot of times when people take off like the Monday or the Friday, Friday just sometimes has a lower trajectory of people who are, who at least to me seem to be signing on and engaging. So I would say Monday through Thursday are the best. Friday is like second best and the weekends are the worst. I really hate saying something is the worst, but I got to keep it real with you. And it's kind of the worst. And I know by the way, someone's going to be in the chat and be like, I posted on Saturday and it did so well. Okay. You're the exception and not the rule. So just so you know, weekends are usually not great. Okay. Video content. If you like videos, if videos are sort of your thing, you do well speaking straight to camera, these are four individuals that you can follow to see their video content. Jessica, Selena, Brittany, who was just on the show a few weeks ago, Cody. In fact, now I'm looking at it. Everybody's been on this show. Huh? I love them. That's why uh, every single one of these people have been on copy with Kim. So just saying, check out their episodes if you haven't already, but their video content is really strong. So if you want to see good examples of video content, that is going to be your best bet. 
Another great question. Are there any post templates that you use or any post formats that you can recommend that are good for boosting engagement? I wish I had like 5,000 hours to go over this with you, but I don't at this exact moment. I actually do have a whole course that's called career capital where we go over this like at in much more detail and in much more of a, a wider stance. So I would encourage you to check out that if you haven't already, but just sort of like a quick post that you recommend for boosting engagement. I would say the shorter, the better people's attention spans are nothing. It's like squirrel, squirrel. So shorter, the better. And I would say, don't post outside links in your post. I know it's very controversial. People are like, I'm doing it now and they're not punishing me. I'm just telling you again, it's my opinion. It's what I've seen that I think that when you post outside links within LinkedIn and you're driving people off platform, remember at the end of the day, this is a business. LinkedIn is a business. Their goal is to keep as many eyeballs on their platform as humanly possible. So when you're like a traffic cop directing people off their platform, hey, go to Wall Street Journal. Hey, go to The Atlantic. Hey, go to the BBC. Hey, go to my local newspaper. Now, LinkedIn is supposed to say, oh, well, I'm sure it's a great resource. Send them off. But I think we all know that they're kind of like, mm, if you're going to send people off to the Wall, the Wall Street Journal, then they're not going to stay on LinkedIn. Then they're off. Their eyeballs are off. Remember, this is a business. At the end of the day, we, we can, yes, it's social media. Yes, we all want to help each other. But LinkedIn is a business. They want to keep your eyeballs on this platform. So if you have an external link, put it in the comments, please. Just, just for me, put it in the comments because that, again, my experience has not been as detrimental of a hit to the reach. So just saying, if you like text only posts, text only, you're like, Kim, I don't want to mess with video. I don't want to write anything that's super long form. I just want to do short text. Check out Justin Welsh and check out Terry Rice. They do a ton of text only posts that I think you'd like to copy and I think you'd like to check them out. Could be pretty cool for you to just see, learn from them, see what they're up to. A little mix of everything, that would be yours truly. I honestly do some video, some long text, some short text, it all depends. But if you wanna kind of see a little smorgasbord, a little buffet, if you will, of all of these things, check out uh, my LinkedIn because it's a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of the type of content that's coming out. Um, I know Kelly was asking, can you post links in the comments section? Yes, you can. You can also comment on your own post. I do that quite a bit. So I might do a post that says like, um, you know, career capital, we're going to do another cohort in the fall. And then instead of putting the link in that post, I will actually comment and say something like, you know, link here. We actually do it for all of these coffee with Kim's. We go back and post the blog on this live stream later as a comment. So again, just our, just our two cents. Don't shoot the messenger. Just saying that's the, that's what we've seen. So now I want to keep going with our two big content. No, no's like if I could just do a big no, no from me to you that you do not ever do these two things. That would be wonderful. That would be like the best thing ever. So number one, please don't make it all about you. Please don't make it all about you. This is the mind frame that I tell every single person before they post on LinkedIn. Can someone share this later with a colleague or friend and look smart? Can they go to a dinner party later and look smart for whatever it is that you are posting? So I'll give you an example of this. If I see a post that someone says, I read this book over the summer, here are the top three things I learned from it. I might take one of those things and later at a dinner party, when someone's talking about books, I might say, oh, well, have you read the new one from Ray Dalio? Heard they have a lot in there about economics and about how China's taking over. Okay, that's a silly example, but I'm just saying I now look smart because I read your post. So whatever it is that you're sharing, is that helping somebody else? Because if it's helping you, other people, it might not help other people. So you have to think, is this going to resonate with somebody else? 
not just me. So that's going to be first and foremost. Leslie asked the question, do you find that mixing things up, text only video posts drives engagement? Yes. Why? Because it's not one size fits all. There are some people that really love consuming video content. There are other people that do not love consuming video content. Same with text only posts, same with long form articles. So I find that by doing a mixed bag, it's kind of like a buffet. If you have a little bit of spaghetti, a little bit of fried chicken, and a little bit of meatloaf, you're going to get everybody because someone at the dinner party will eat one of those things. If you have three options and they're all seafood and you have friends come over and they don't eat seafood, then they're not eating. So I just find that by mixing it up a little bit, you can kind of hit everybody, if that makes sense. <coughs> Woo, excuse me. Number two, do not overload a post with hashtags. Hashtags are exciting. Hashtags are fun. But they're sort of like candy. Only use them sparingly. We don't overload ourselves with candy unless it's Halloween. So we do the same thing with hashtags. We're not using them all the time. What do I mean by that? The max hashtags that I want you to use are three. Maybe four, but three. So as you can see in this post right here, closest to me on the, on the left, way too many hashtags. I didn't even count, but there's probably 30 hashtags in there. Way too confusing. The algorithm doesn't like it. It's not going to go over well. The far post, the one closest to the chat box, only has four hashtags. Much better, much cleaner. Algorithm will not get as confused. Remember, I don't make the algorithm rules. I'm just transferring that knowledge to you. So you can say, well, Kim, I want to do 10 posts of hashtags. Okay. I'm just telling you, you're going to confuse the algorithm. So you can do 10 hashtags, but if the post doesn't do as well, like don't come, don't come after me. So three to four hashtags max, that is going to be your best bet, best bet. So many good questions. We got to get to some of these things. Okay. John's question. Do you have advice or guidance on amplification groups? I got involved in one recently. Mixed results so far. I have mixed feelings on these. So what John's talking about, if you haven't heard from it, heard of it, these amplification groups are, let's call it a group of 10 people. And the 10 people get together and they say, okay, Every time you post, the other nine of us are going to like it and comment on it. And then the other time somebody else posts, okay, the nine of us are going to like it and comment on it. It's sort of like this um, symbiotic, you like me, I like you, you comment on mine, I comment on yours. But it's organized. It's like, like a little mafia, like a little engagement mafia. The reason I have mixed feelings on these is because a lot of times the people in that group are all doing wildly different things. Like one of them works in sales, one of them's an actor, one of them works in digital marketing, and the other one's an HR manager. And what that tells the algorithm is like, huh, why, why does this person who usually works in sales, are they all of a sudden liking all this marketing content? Are they all of a sudden liking, you know, all of this HR content? What I would rather people do instead of these engagement pods is going back to my whole point about copy your homework. If you work in sales, let's use sales as an example. I might go follow Jake Dunlap, Katie Dorsey, and Max Alstruster on LinkedIn. Those are three big sales guys. They post almost every day all about sales. If I work in sales, I would rather you comment and like and connect with those people so the algorithm goes, oh, not only are they is that person posting about sales, they're also interacting with these other people posting about sales. I just feel like the algorithm gets to know you better than if you're posting on all these uh, in these engagement pods and you're reacting to things that actually have nothing to do with what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So I know it's a very controversial subject and people, some people love these engagement pods, some people hate them. Again, just giving my opinion, I don't love them and that is why. But 
you know, feel free to join them, but maybe share results. I, I'd be curious if anybody in the chat has joined one, what you found, maybe drop it in. As John said, you know, mixed results for him so far, but maybe somebody else is finding that there's better results. I don't know. So we'll see. I also want to share one insider secret that I have been seeing recently. This is just, again, this is August of 2022. This is just something that I've been seeing recently. Again, I don't know how long this will last. I don't know how long this is going to go for, but this is just a secret that I've been noticing that's been really prevalent. If you are stuck on what to post about and you're like, I know I want to post, but I'm not sure if it's sales or marketing or, you know, advice or whatever it is, and you just want somewhere to start, or if you're already posting about subject and, you know, maybe you just kind of wake up that day and you don't know what you want to post about, check out the LinkedIn homepage, because on the top right in the corner is a news section. So you can see it here. We took a screenshot of today's, although this is a few hours old. It'll say LinkedIn news, and it'll give anywhere from five to 10 bullet points, especially if you click that show more button, there'll be more that drop down. And it'll say in this case, Elon Musk goes after Jack Dorsey, steering through economic viability. Those could be interesting things for you to check out because you might, if you start talking about those subjects, you might get picked up by the editors. What does that mean when I say you might get picked up by the editors? If we were to, for example, click on that first bullet point that says Elon Musk goes after Jack Dorsey, and we click that with our mouse, that page will open up and expand to a full article. In this case, an article by Jessica Hartogs that says, you know, Elon Musk is going after Jack Dorsey and Twitter and, and kind of talking about what happens. Then you'll see at the very bottom right here, you'll see that John Kim has given his sort of two cents or spin on what's happening in the article. So he's saying, you know, this could all be a moot point, Twitter's head of security, you know, kind of going on about the article. The editor saw his post about this subject and decided to pin it to their newsfeed. So they pin on average, you know, anywhere from 50 to 60 responses to an article. And by the way, those are dynamic. So I would actually be very curious because this is a few hours old. If after this live stream, I go on and click this bullet point, Elon Musk goes after Jack Dorsey, if that John Kim is still at the top, because I think it's pretty dynamic. I think it's changing all the time. I have noticed more and more people getting picked up by the LinkedIn news team. Again, I don't understand the rhyme or reason. I don't know why I'm not, I don't work at LinkedIn. I don't know their inner workings, but from what I've seen, they are really pushing LinkedIn news, really pushing LinkedIn news. So if you are looking for content to write, if you are looking for a subject to write, I encourage you to look at that LinkedIn news section. And by the way, maybe you can take something that you already enjoy talking about, again, sales, marketing, I might, if I enjoy talking about marketing, I might look at that Elon and Twitter story and put my own sort of marketing spin on it and say something like, you know, what great marketing for Tesla. Elon's always in the news. Here are the top three things that I think Elon's doing right. That's just an example, but you get what I'm saying. So you might even give your own spin on what's happening in those news articles. So again, I don't know how long this is going to last. I'm just saying that it's something that I've been seeing a lot of right now, that those LinkedIn news articles are going quite far. So again, I hope that this has been really helpful for you. I will also say, if you have not checked out this course, Launching Your Own Creator Business, please check it out. It is free, completely free from LinkedIn Learning. You can scan this with your phone. So if you get your phone out and you hold it up to the screen, like this, you can scan it and it will lead you directly to it. Or you can head over to LinkedIn Learning and you can search for my name and it will be there. But again, it's totally free. I would so love for you to check it out right now because I don't know how long it will be free for. So again, I'll keep asking questions, but wanted to make sure that we, again, said that this is free. And if this, if you like this type of content, that that's what that whole course is filled with. So again, if you're new to LinkedIn and you're new to these workshops, you can head over to helpmylinkedin.com and get some of my profile tips if that would be helpful for you. I think that could be a great first resource. 
keep those Q and A comings. Uh, Miss Lai, I see your question in there. I'm going to get to it right now. But if you have a question, keep it coming so that I can help answer those. So the next question is for your live interviews, do you plan a script before and share it with the person or do you improvise? I have seen it done both ways. So I have been a part of live streams where somebody says, Kim, here are the 10 questions I'm going to ask you. We're going to ask these 10 questions in order. And that's what we're going to do. That's one way to do it. For me personally, because I want these for me to be very kind of natural, authentic conversations, what I will do, honestly, similar to if I was going to meet somebody in a coffee shop for real, <laughs> without everybody here, I may say, I might go meet my friend Helene and say, Helene, hey, let's get coffee next Tuesday. Um, just so you know, ahead of the coffee, I'm really struggling with um, my employees. I really need help, you know, hiring. I'm sort of confused. I'm torn. Okay, just when we meet next Tuesday, just know, like, I'm definitely going to ask you about hiring. And I'm also going to ask you about insurance. I know open enrollment's coming up. Just making that up. So I sort of give Helene a heads up, like, hey, I'm going to be asking about hiring people and I'm going to be asking about insurance. But I don't say like, Helene, before we meet for coffee, here's my 28 questions that I plan on asking you. Because that just wouldn't be natural. If we were getting coffee, you'd be like, you know, she would say something and it might trigger another question in my mind. So for me, I always give people like a loose outline, like here are the subjects that I really want to talk about. But I've had conversations, honestly, that have gone like totally sideways in a great way. I just mean that people start sharing and I'm like, oh, wait, you do that? Or like, oh, wait, that's so great. Let's kind of like dig into this rabbit hole a little bit. Whereas I know sometimes when I've tuned into other live streams or other shows, it's like, or a podcast or anything, like a little bit of gold gets uncovered and the person who's interviewing or the host doesn't like dig in on gold because they're like, the next question is question number six and question number six means like, like they don't follow up. Do you know what I mean? Like the question number five could have been like, Oh, here's a really interesting number six, but you know, question number six, you know, you wouldn't have known. So I just think it's more authentic to kind of go where the conversation takes you and not necessarily stick to like a rigid platform. But again, everyone's different. And if it makes you feel confident to kind of have those questions and you want them in order, then that's fine. You know, everybody's Choose your own adventure. But for me, I have a loose script, but not anything hard and fast, if that makes any sense. So hopefully that will help. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad that Kimberly was saying she's going to use some of the content that we used in this workshop. That's what lifts me up. That's what makes me so happy. I hope that everything is going to be something that is actionable for you. So the whole point of these mini workshops is that you leave here saying, I have one thing that I can take action on, no matter how small, no matter how little I can take action on it. That's the whole point of these mini workshops. So if I could give you homework from this mini workshop, I would like to challenge you for the month of September to block off time in your calendar to create, maybe it's one piece of content, Maybe it's two, maybe it's three, maybe it's even four, but block off time to create content for yourself to post on social media. So that would be my one homework assignment for you is to, when we hang up, when we leave this meeting, write down in your calendar or type out in your calendar, maybe it's an hour or 30 minutes, just block off time to create content because I think that's going to be so, so important and helpful for you. Okay, we have another question about company pages on LinkedIn. So what is the best approach to get the first 100 followers on a newly created LinkedIn company page? I'm down and dirty. So the fastest way that I would get to 100 is begging friends and family. There's no, if you're looking for shame, you came to the wrong place because I'm a shameless girl right here. So I would be sending out people messages, text messages. Here's the thing that you want to do. If you're asking somebody to do something, you have to make it as easy as possible on them. And I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example right now. If I asked you right now, hey, Shelby and I are working on something and we're trying to get votes. I'm making that up. We're trying to get votes. 
Oh, this is a good example. Abby, my business partner, is up for a 40 under 40 award. We will drop the link in the chat or Jeff will or Shelby will. Someone's going to drop the link in the chat. But here's the thing. I wanted people to vote for Abby because, duh, I want people to vote for Abby. We, I would send the link. I, literally, I was texting my mother and like I, my mom's texting me like, oh, we got to get people to vote. This is huge. So you, we sent the exact link where all you had to do was two clicks. You click on Abby, that's one click, and you click vote, two clicks, that's it. So I put in an ask, I sent an email to like all my college friends. Hi, I need you to vote for Abby, you know, for this 40 under 40 award, it's gonna be so great. Huge favor to me, I owe you one, I owe you a drink, I owe you lunch, whatever. Please vote, click this link, ask number one, click vote. Ask number two. So your entire ask is like maybe 15 seconds, like click, click, 15 seconds. If I were to in, write an email and instead say, hey, um, Abby's up for this award. Would you mind voting for her? And I didn't include a link. So now I'm making, now I'm making the person that I asked for a favor do work. Automatic, no, people hate doing work. So if I make them do work, I make them log on to her LinkedIn or log on to her Instagram and figure out how to vote and figure out that's too much. You've asked too much. People aren't going to do it. It's too much work. We are all too busy. We are moving too fast for you to make people do work. So if you want a hundred people to join your company page, you need to write a very short email. You need to include the exact link and you need to tell people what to do. Hey, Teresa, can you please do me a favor? I have a new LinkedIn company page. I'd love for you to follow it. I'm trying to gain a hundred plus followers. Literally tell the truth. Then say, number one, Teresa, click this link. Hopefully Teresa can do that. And number two, press follow. That's it. Short, sweet, boom. Send that out to everyone, anyone, your family, your friends, boom. You will have a hundred people. Guarantee it. You will have a hundred people. So don't be afraid. Don't wait for people to come to you. Make it as easy as humanly possible for them to help you. Because people want to help you. Okay, I'll speak for myself. I want to help most people, but I'm incredibly a mix of busy and lazy. So if you make me work too hard to help you, someone else has asked me to help them and they've made it real easy. They've made it real easy for me to help them. So be one of the people that it's really, really easy for them to help. Kelly has a very non-silly question, which is what's the difference between impressions and engagement? Honestly, this should be the eighth wonder of the world because I believe there's only seven wonders of the world. So this should be eight. Here's what's a little confusing about this. A lot of times on social media, an impression is when somebody sees something like, oh, I saw it and I stopped on it, but maybe I didn't engage with it. I didn't like it. I didn't forward it to a friend. Um, some social media platforms, I don't want to get too crazy. This might be confusing to you, um, but they call it a scroll stop. So as you can imagine, let's say I'm looking at flowers and then all of a sudden I see a beautiful red flower and I kind of stop right? I stop my scrolling and I go, oh, what a beautiful red flower. And then I'm kind of over it. And then I start some social media platforms like Instagram, for example, will count that as an impression. So even though there wasn't an action, there wasn't a like or a comment, it's called a scroll stop. I know it starts to get a little crazy, but they will count that as an impression. Whereas an engagement is actually, you are physically engaging, you are liking, you are sharing, you are commenting with a post. So that's why you might say like, wait, well, why are those numbers so different? Why is my impression so high, but my engagements are only like half of that? Hopefully that that helps clear that up a little bit. Um, another follow-up question is, is there a magic number for followers? There is no magic number for followers. There is a magic number for connections. You have to get to 500 connections on LinkedIn. I don't care if you have to connect with the annoying neighbor from two houses ago. Don't care. You got to do it. You got to suck up your pride and you got to press the connect button because you have got to get to LinkedIn's 500 magic number. Because when I'm going to see if we have a screenshot of this, we might have this. Okay. I'm going to show you right here. 
Um, when you get to 500, oh, this might not be a good one. Okay. This isn't a good one. Pooper. Okay. I basically, when you get to 500, it'll just be 500 plus. And then people don't know if you have 501 or 5,000. They have no idea how many connections you have. So if you can get to 500, that is the magic number. If you do nothing else, do that. By the way, can we all agree that John is the MVP because he just voted for Abby in like two seconds? So thank you. And thank you for putting the link. If everyone could vote, that would be a really nice thank you for this mini workshop. Uh, I really appreciate it. And the gift. I didn't give the gift, but I kind of gave the gift of the free LinkedIn course. So if everyone could vote for Abby, I would really appreciate it. And it only takes two seconds because we literally put the link in there and all you have to do is click it and then click Abby. So it's pretty easy. Uh, and hopefully that will be a very nice little, a very nice little thank you. I am going to do a shout out if this was helpful. If you're like, wow, Kim is smart and gives me good advice. You can get more of it. You just have to go to copymyhomework.com and sign up to get more of the workshops, more of the learning, more of the advice straight to your inbox. So copymyhomework.com, really easy if this was helpful. I will also say, you heard me touch on it earlier, coffee sessions with other smart humans. Those are going to be invaluable for you. They're invaluable for me. If that sounds of interest, every single week at 1 p.m. Eastern, we meet right here and we do it together. So you can go to getcoffeewithkim.com. You can see an upcoming calendar of who's coming on and when. Uh, we have Christina week after next, followed by Ron and our very own Jen, who's going to pass along tons of info. These are going to be fantastic sessions. So you can go to getcoffeewithkim.com and check out and sign up for those because those are going to be super great and interesting. Note to self, we are not doing one next week. I have a speaking engagement. So I have a speaking engagement, literally speaking to a big group right as we would do this on Wednesdays at 1 p.m. So I'm very sorry about that. Uh, speaking engagement rules, can't break that. But we'll be back week after next at 1 p.m. Eastern. So I cannot wait to see you there. Hopefully this was helpful. If there are questions that I didn't get to that you still have, don't worry. You can message me on LinkedIn, on Instagram. You can send an email to our inbox, whatever it takes. Happy to help, happy to answer them. The biggest gift for me would to be see you start creating content. I just think sharing your knowledge with other people is beyond helpful to you and to all of us. So sending you a big cheers, my friend. I hope you have an amazing rest of the week. I hope you absolutely crush it. Block off time in your calendar to post your smarts on LinkedIn. And I look forward to seeing your posts very soon. Cheers.